Hello everyone, this is the Horror Hotline, and today we will be discussing some of the scariest serial killers who confessed over the phone. Each of these will include audio clips from the killers themselves. This video will also contain some dark language and potentially triggering material. Viewer discretion is advised. Coming in at number 5, we have Clay. On August 17th, 1997, a man by the name of Clay makes an appearance on Howard Stern's popular radio show. The killer makes his confessions on air and puts everyone into a state of shock. Here is an audio clip from that occurrence. All right, I got a guy on the phone who claims he's been killing prostitutes and he's wondering why he's doing it. Oh, so maybe uh, he, he thinks I have an answer. Is this Ed? Ed? No, this isn't Ed. No. You haven't killed any prostitutes? No, I never said my name was Ed. Oh. oh. Sorry. That's okay. What's your what name do you use? You can call me Clay. Clay? Clay? <laughs> yes, yeah. Clay. Okay, Clay. So what happened? How many prostitutes have you killed? Twelve. And you're wondering yeah. why you do it? I have a pretty good idea. Why? Did your mom beat you? Did your mom spank you? Did uh... Was your mom a prostitute? No. Actually, nothing like that. What is it, then? I think I just do it for the sense of the power. All right. Do you have sex with them first? Yes, and... And then what, you strangle them? Once. How else did you kill them? Well, a few times, actually, most times with a hammer. Hmm. And where do you do this primarily? Uh, I've done it twice in a parking garage, and then the rest of the time's on the side of the road. And uh, you're from the New Orleans area? Yes. Hmm. Sure. And how, I mean, what do you, you beat them to death with a hammer? Man. That uh, usually only takes once, in it? Dude, you got to have a lot of anger in you. Yes. And that means you're heartless. Do you used to kill small animals? No, I've killed a rat. Yeah. Dude, you're a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you get away with it, I guess, because they're hookers, and so far Is nobody's... Howard? What? Is this Howard? Yeah. Hello? Hello? I didn't know this was Howard. Yeah, it's yeah, Howard. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've never killed a kitten. Hmm. So how old were, were you when you killed your first woman? Sixteen. And uh, you must be a powerful kind of guy, big guy. Uh, I wasn't then. Right. And uh, when you killed your first one, did you go in there knowing you were going to kill her, or it just sort of happened? I I knew. I, I, had, I really had it planned out. Hmm. You know, I wanted to do the whole sending clues. Right. Oh yeah. Are you in? To baffle people, but it turned out no one noticed for a long time. Right. Like what? Like you killed her on the side of the road. Uh, her. That was the parking garage. Okay. And then what'd you do with the body? You dumped that somewhere? Um. Yeah, actually, I think uh, she's probably one of the ones that they found. Yeah. But let me ask you something. You were sending clues that you were going to do this? No, I was. Uh, he was going to like doing that. He was going to leave like a note for the newspapers, and you know. Oh, but you decided not to. He didn't want to be famous or draw attention to himself. But my problem is... No, that's, that's what I wanted to do, but... Oh, but you did, but no one noticed the clues. I, no, I never sent the clues. I never no. left anything. You know, I wanted to have my own little signature. Right. I wanted to thumb paint oh, it's, with uh, their thumbs. Oh, really? What do you want to do? Thumb paint with their thumbs. Thumb paint what, though? I don't know. Oh, anything. It, it was in a comic book a couple of years ago. It just seemed like a good idea. Like, you take the girl you killed, you, you dip her thumbs in paint, and then you do, like, a thumb painting? Yes. On a piece of paper? Yeah. Hmm. Now, when you after you kill somebody, do you play with the body? Um, actually, the closest I've ever done to that is I always make sure I pay them, and I make sure they keep their money. Oh, really? When they're still alive, but, uh, with one of them, I did put the money in a compromising place. I see. But that was, this one... After that audio clip was released, there has been speculation that the perpetrator could have been Russell Elwood, a taxi driver who began killing his victims with an unclear goal. It is suspected that Elwood killed at least 26 prostitutes between the years 1991 through 1996. Elwood was eventually sentenced to life in prison for first degree murder. Coming in at number four, we have the Zodiac Killer. 
On October 22, 1969, a man who claimed to be the Zodiac Killer made an appearance on Jim Dunbar's live television show. The killer named himself Sam during the confession. Listen closely to the upcoming video and see what you guys think. Tell me in the comments if you think this is the real Zodiac Killer. Zodiac, a symbol that now stands for terror in San Francisco. Today, there was a possibly significant development in the terrifying case of the man who calls himself Zodiac and has boasted that he is responsible for five murders in the last nine months. In Zodiac's latest letter last week, he threatened to make a busload of school children his next victims. Since then, school buses have been discreetly guarded and parents' fears have openly risen. This morning, the people of San Francisco heard a man who claimed to be Zodiac talking on the air during a television conversation program with attorney Melvin Belli and the program's host, Jim Dunbar. That was the voice of a man who called himself the Zodiac Killer. He's talking to attorney Melvin Belli by phone on a television conversation show. This bizarre situation began at 2 o'clock this morning when the so-called Zodiac telephoned police headquarters. He said he was sick, he needed help, and he wanted to talk to Belli on television. All the scheduled guests were canceled from the show on the ABC station KGO. Belli waited for Zodiac to call on the private line. The phone was not tapped. The killer telephoned 12 times. He spoke very little with attorney Belli trying to draw him out. Jim. Jim said, well, maybe he's afraid of being beaten up or something like that now. Um, what, 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 what can I say? Well, why don't we just ask Sam to tell us a little bit more about what he's feeling right now. What do you, tell us about your, your feelings, Sam. You know, just tell us anything you want to. And then we'll come back and I'll give you a specific answer to this question Are you going to the gas chamber. Uh, stay with us so I can answer that for you. But uh, w w will you uh, attend on Jim just a minute and tell me, tell him what, what you're feeling or, or talk to us? Just tell us what's going on in, in, inside you right now, Sam, please. I have headache. All right. How long have you had those headaches, uh, Sam? In a long time? Since I was a kid. If, if it all boils down to the question of you're giving yourself up, if you could be assured that you wouldn't get capital punishment for myself. I don't want to give myself I, up. Huh? I so, want to close, kid. Bill, I finally arranged to meet Zodiac in Daly City, a suburb south of San Francisco, to talk in person. The attorney waited in an office building, but Zodiac never showed. I asked Bill I if he thought the man who called really was the Zodiac killer. I can't. Negative. I, I, I can't say. All I can say is this man needed help. This man seemed like a man who was coming up to a storm or to a climax. And th th this very blood-curdling thing. Children. And then the sort of an agonized uh, cutoff. And enough to turn your hair whiter than mine. So inside the thrift shop, St. Vincent de Paul, attorney Melvin Belli and the San Francisco police waited for the Zodiac killer. The man did not show. So now all we can do is wait perhaps for that next phone call from the man who calls himself Zodiac, who has killed five and says he's going to kill again. Dick Shoemaker, ABC News, San Francisco. We'll be back with more news in a moment. Later the same day, three different people were brought in to listen to his voice to determine if he was in fact the real Zodiac killer. Nancy Slover, a Vallejo dispatcher, stated that the voice was too pitiful and pathetic to be the Zodiac End quote. It was eventually determined that the anonymous caller was not, in fact, the Zodiac Killer, but was from a mental patient by the name Eric Well. Coming in at number three, we have Paul Michael Stefani. Paul Michael Stefani was an American serial killer and was more commonly known as the Weepy Voiced Killer due to the anonymous phone calls he would make to police in a high-pitched, unrecognizable voice. What I'm going to show you next is an audio excerpt from one of the phone calls he had with a police dispatcher. Don't talk, just listen. I'm sorry what I did to Compton. I couldn't help it. Don't know why I had this tavern. I am so 
I'm sad about it. I keep getting drunk every day and I can't believe it. It's like a big dream. I, just, I can't think of being locked up. If I get locked up, I'll kill myself. I'd rather kill myself than get locked up. I'll try not to kill anybody else. By your emergency. Please don't talk, just listen. I'm sorry, I killed that girl. I stabbed her 40 times. Kimberly Compton was the first one over oh, the oh, I don't know what you're mad at me. I'm sick. I'm going to kill myself, I think. Where are you? I'm just gonna, I, there's so many times with a red shirt on. It's me. I killed both of them. I'm sorry. I'm never going to get to heaven. Calm down. Calm down. Expert in... Oh, yeah. You find me, I just stabbed somebody with an ice pick. I can't stop myself. I keep killing somebody. Yes, please, this is an emergency. Please send a squad to Pierce Butler Road, uh, Mullenberg Manufacturing Company, Machine Shop. Please, there's an ambulance, too. There's a girl hurt there. Can you tell me what happened to her? Just hurry, there's a, she's laying on the ground in the back by the, by the railroad tracks, by the edge of What's the address? I don't know. Who are you? Stefani was eventually arrested and convicted of attempted murder. However, they could not directly connect him to the weepy-voiced killer, even though Stefani's sister came out and confirmed it was, indeed, his voice when hearing it in the audio clips. Coming in at number two, we have the Golden State Killer. The Golden State Killer was a serial killer who terrorized the cities of California between the 1970s and 1980s. He was known for R-wording a multitude of women. Before he began R-wording people, he was burglarizing houses between 1974 to 1975. Here is a clip from one of the calls someone received from the renowned Golden State Killer. Take a listen. The Golden State Killer, also known as Joseph James D'Angelo Jr., was officially arrested in 2018, but was only found due to extensive and complex genetic research. A detective confirmed this by uploading a specimen of D'Angelo's semen, which they then had uploaded to match up to his current profile. Before we talk about the suspect who takes the number one spot, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like on the video. It helps me to keep this channel going in the future so I can keep producing content for you guys. Coming in at the number one spot, we have Samuel Little. In the late 1980s, Samuel Little was renowned for being one of the most prolific serial killers in US history. He had managed to kill upwards of 93 people before finally being arrested in 2012. Here is an audio clip of one of his confessions. Tell me about Mary Ann. She's what you nowadays they call a transgender. She's a black male dressed up as a female. Okay. How tall is, is she? Mary Ann's about five, seven, seven, five, six. 
she weighed about 135, okay. one, maybe 140. And how old do you think she was? But she was 19. Okay. And where was she from? No, I'm Miami, down in Liberty City. Okay. And did she, um, you mentioned before she had a boyfriend or she talked about a boyfriend? Name Wes. Wes? Yeah, yeah. And tell me about where you met her at. So I seen her down at the Glar on 17th Avenue and she had on a short cream money skirt. <clears throat> cream and red. So then this opportunity popped up mm -hmm. to take her to the store. Right. She didn't even bring it up back to the apartment. I went down to 27th Street. That's going down to a uh, for a lot of them, mm -hmm. called the gate the alligator alley. It, it turns into, it runs in the alligator alley. Right. But the further out you get, the further you get out of Miami. Right. And you, you got vegetation in there. Now, how far outside of Miami do you think you were? About, it wasn't too far out of Miami, right okay. there. I was in my stepdad's car, Pontiac Lemans. Now, where'd you take her to? Continue down to an Mm -hmm. Got back on to Going seven. outside of Miami. Okay. Miami. Going away from Miami. Going away from Miami. We yeah. got down past the, uh, past the, let's say, limits. So I continued on toward Fort Lauderdale. Okay. And I seen a road going off the main road back into the vegetation mm -hmm. on the left side. So I got out of the car, pulled her out and drug her into the ropes back there and pulled her deeper into the, a path, a little path was running somewhere, I don't know where it led it to, mm -hmm. but it was running deeper into the undergrowth. Mm -hmm. it, it's like uh, Everglades like that. And we ran into uh, uh, some water running. And, but before we got to the water, the earth was mushy. I turned loose. And she fell into it face down. And how far outside of Miami do you think you were? About a mile, two miles. Uh, what year did Marianne occur? Uh, 72. Okay, 1972. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys the next time I post a video. Goodbye!